If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. It's a bit of a verbose problem, but what we're going to do to get it started is to first try to draw a free body diagram of the tibia. We're going to show all the forces acting on the tibia. So here is the force of tension acting on the tibia. This is the weight of the tibia acting downward and then the weight of the foot acting at the end of the tibia. We'll notice that the angle with respect to the vertical is marked as theta in the drawing. And since the weight force and the foot force are both parallel to that vertical line, that means that this angle right here would be theta. And then if we extend the tibia a little bit, that angle right there would also be theta. And the reason we bring that to our attention is because we're going to actually break the W force and the foot force into X and Y components. So we've drawn those components in red for the weight force. We can label this component the X component, and then this component right here will be our Y component. We're going to do the same thing for the foot force. Now off on the side, what we want to note is that WY, which again is the Y component of the weight force, we'll notice that it's opposite from the angle marked theta. So we can actually use trigonometry to say that that's going to be W times the sine of the angle. Now, W was given to us in the question as 30 newtons, and the angle theta was given as 40 degrees. So we can actually plug in those values. And when we do that, we see that WY is approximately 19.3 newtons. We're going to hold on to this result. Now, similarly, we can see that the Y component of the foot force is opposite to the angle theta as well. So we can write F sub Y is equal to the foot force multiplied by the sine of the angle. Now, the foot force was given as 12.5 newtons, and again, we know the angle is 40 degrees. So we can go ahead and calculate the Y component of the foot force. And it turns out to be roughly 8.03 newtons. Now, we would also like to break the tension force into an X and a Y component, so let's draw those components. Now, the question notes that the angle between the tension force and the tibia was 25 degrees. So this angle right here is 25. That means that the Y component of that tension force is going to be the tension times the sine of that 25 degree angle. Now, we know that the tibia is in equilibrium, so that means that the sum of the torques acting on the tibia should equal zero. In order to use this equation, though, we need to select a pivot point. And what we'll do is select a pivot at the top of the tibia. Now, what we want to note is that the X components of our forces, so TX, WX, and FX, they all point along a line that passes through the pivot. That means that their torques will equal zero, so we can eliminate them from the torque equation. Therefore, only these three forces will produce torque. Now let's not forget that torque is equal to a force times a distance and also technically times the sine of an angle. If you look carefully, and I admit it's a little hard to see from the drawing, but you can see that all the Y components are acting at 90 degree angles with respect to the tibia. Now the sine of 90 degrees, of course, is equal to 1. So actually this sine term can be eliminated for all three torques because all three of them have an angle of 90 and the sine of 90 is 1. So when we plug in the torques, we're really just going to be using force times distance. Notice that the tension force is tending to cause a counterclockwise rotation. That's a negative torque, whereas the weight and foot forces are all tending to produce a clockwise torque, which is positive. So with those ideas in mind, we're going to plug into the sum of the torques equation. So here are all the torques plugged into the equation. Just take note that each one is a force multiplied by a distance. And what we want to do is just make sure we understand where these distances here, here, and here are coming from. So note that the 8.03 newtons, the Fy, is located at the very end of the tibia. So that means the distance from that force to the pivot is the full length of the tibia, and we've called that D. The weight of the tibia acts at the geometric center, and so the distance from that force to the pivot would just be half of the length of the tibia, and that's why we've labeled D over 2. And then the question states that the tension force is acting one-fifth of the way down the leg, and that's why we've called that distance D over 5. Now, algebraically, the Ds will actually cancel out of the equation, and so the equation can simplify. We could then pick up our calculators 
and combine the negative term here and that negative term there. We'll then add 17.68 to both sides of the equation and then divide by sine of 25 times 1 fifth. And when you do that, you get a value for tension of approximately 209 newtons. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.